Let's take a look at how you can create your first query. I'll go ahead and create a brand new query from scratch by clicking Create New Query. The first thing you will have to do is select a data source. All available data sources are listed in the sidebar, and there is a search bar to make it easier to find what you're looking for. Let's type Google to see what happens. As you can see, the contextual filtering narrows down the options significantly. For this example, let's select Google Ads. This will start the authentication flow. The first time you connect to any data source, you will have to authenticate access by, for example, logging in to the data source platform or providing other details. Authentication methods vary by data source. Once you have provided Supermetrics the required access permissions, the tool can then start pulling data from the data source platform on your behalf. Authentication is needed the first time you use a data source, but once established, the access will remain available until you either manually disconnect or your logging expires. In case of the latter, re-authentication to the data source will be required. Note that login expiration times are individual to each data source. Now that you have the data source selected and authenticated, you'd need to select the ad accounts which you want to acquire data for. For this data source, you have the options to select all accounts or individual accounts. Note that the options or names may vary depending on the data source. For example, in Google Analytics, you will have views instead of accounts. Let's go ahead and select an account. Please also note that there is a button to refresh account list, which is very useful in case your user frequently gets access to new ad accounts, for example, because you manage clients in an ad agency. Now that you have defined both your data source and the account you want to query, you need to define a few more parameters. These are date range, metrics, and dimensions. Dimensions are optional. By not selecting any, you'll simply aggregate the metrics for the selected date range into grand totals. Going in order of the sidebar, let's start with defining the date range under Select Dates. By clicking Date Range, you can see a number of useful presets to choose from. It is also possible to enter a custom date range, which I'll cover in a future example. For now, let's select last week, Monday to Sunday. You can see the actual dates reflected in the start and end dates in the bottom. Now, let's select a few metrics. By clicking the prompt field, you are presented with a list of all available metrics for this platform. They are grouped by category, and clicking the category header will select all the metrics inside that category. Searching for a metric is also possible. You can remove any selected metrics by clicking the X icon next to the metric names, or you can remove all metrics by clicking the trash bin icon. For this example, let's start typing IMP to start the contextual filtering and then select Impressions. Let's also query Cost and Clicks. For this example, I'll not add any dimensions to the query. The expected outcome is therefore an aggregated grand total of each of the selected metrics for a period of last week. To run the query, I'll click Get Data to Table at the top of the Supermetric sidebar. Note that this will run the query and insert the resulting data into the highlighted cell in the spreadsheet. It's up to you where you want the result to appear. I'll select the cell A1. Now that the query has completed its run, you can indeed see the results starting from cell A1. Let's continue from here and look deeper into the various options you can find in the Supermetrics sidebar by creating another query. 
For the next example, let's connect to a data source and start building a query. The date range for sets offer a lot of flexibility. For example, you can use last X months to pull data for the last six months. If desired, you can click the checkbox including this month to also include the current ongoing month. If you have a specific start and end date you want to see, you can have an option to define a custom date range. You can also input text here, which will dynamically update the underlying dates depending on the query execution date. Let's input the first day of last month until today for this query to get last month to date. More information can be found by hovering over start date or end date. The tooltip contains links to documentation on this feature. Compare to is a functionality that will enable you to set a date range to compare your current results to. We can calculate year over year changes by selecting same dates a year ago and displaying the result as percentage change in a separate column for each metric. It's important to note that Supermetrics will query this comparison date range in the background, essentially doubling the amount of data you're acquiring. This will increase the time required to refresh your queries and might result in queries turning out if they are particularly heavy. I will provide some tips on how you can avoid this issue when I'll be explaining the combine your results with old feature. Let's query the same metrics as before. This time, I'll introduce some dimensions to split the data by. There are two ways in which you can split the data, vertically into separate rows or horizontally into separate columns. Let's demonstrate the difference between the two. Let's split data into rows first. You can add multiple layers of dimensions here for this example, let's split by two dimensions, date and campaign ID. When you run this query, you can see how it returns the metrics split by dimensions you define. You can also control the numbers of rows to fetch, which has the maximum of 1 million at a time. If I want to see the top 10 campaigns generating the most impressions, I can change this to fetch only 10 rows and I can apply a sorting rule to sort by impressions in descending order. This is also possible to add a secondary sort. When I apply the changes now, I can see how resulting data changes according to the parameters I've defined. You can also split data into columns. For this example, let's split by a single dimension, year and month. Note that you can also define the number of columns to fetch, but it's limited to 500 at a time. That is because Google Sheets is optimized for long tables as opposed to very wide tables. The option of splitting to columns is best used for acquiring data split to a low level of granularity, like year and month. If I were to query very granular data with, for example, dimensions like date, campaign ID or ad ID, it's highly likely that my resulting data set will be exceeding the limit of 500 columns unless I only query a handful of days.